All right, what's up, everybody? Thomas Tran here, TLR, and I'm with my special guest, Tom Rinderneck. Tom, How's what's it going, going on, everybody? Man? Not much, man. Just uh, living the life here at home, working on the cars, <laughs> getting quick, in laps when I can. Yeah, quick update. What's going on with you right now with the, with the whole COVID stuff? Uh, yeah, so here we're just trying to stay home as much as possible, and then we also have been able, me and Mason, have been able to go practice a few times. So you're practicing with Mason? Yeah. That's got to be a lot of fun, man. Yeah, we, it's fun to push each other around the track and kind of get better together and learn like some of the nitro stuff. It's really do you, cool. Do you guys ever have goof off sessions where you're just hacking each other constantly? I mean, we don't. I mean, we try to just have like cool battles. <laughs> cool battles. Hey, dude, let's let's do our cool battles. Let's man. do a sick battle. I think is what, yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just behind the scene, who who usually wins these sick battles? I don't know, dude. It normally ends up in one of us just absolutely squidding out. So <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. It's, it's All right. fun. But, yeah, when we're practicing good together, it definitely is uh, improving cool. our game, and that's what we're trying to do most yeah. of the time. Awesome. I'm a firm firm believer in steel, sharp, and steel. So, like, when you practice with good people, you just naturally get faster. So it's good that you have somebody to really sure. kind of – to track with and get a lot of track time in. and yeah. also you guys are really good friends off and on the track too so that yeah. always makes it more fun but oh, yeah, uh, for sure. today in this episode of tlr race breakdown we're going to bring you one of my absolute favorite races that i've got to witness uh live in person this we're talking about the 2020 reader race the full wheel open class and tom right here next to me or actually this way there you go. He, yeah so he actually was able to win this win the whole thing and uh we're gonna sit sit down and analyze uh what's going on with tom uh during his weekend at the Rita race of champions so we got the the video on cue here um so before we get into the video though i want to ask you tom how much like actually let's back it up just a bit uh when did the Radio Race of Champions become one of your priorities? When did it become like, okay, I want to win this race? When did when did it become a goal for you? Probably the first time I went. You know, what, like we just just going into that and watching like the previous year's races and stuff. In 2015 was my first open class, and that's ever since I went there. It's like always been a dream to win and run an invite also, which I've had a chance to do both, which I've been really excited about. Yeah, so you've got basically a dream come true to run in the invite class. And how did that happen? You were able to qualify in from the nationals? Yep. Yeah, so if you, what was it? If you place in the top 10 in the A main, then yep. you get uh, your qualifier eligible to race in the invite class at the radio race. So, and, uh, but uh, in this, in 2020, you're able to race the open class. And man, what a race it was. And to me, it's it was so special because of the fact that um, the story was so awesome. You know, uh, a young up and coming kid putting in a lot of work and then it being a major goal of yours and then to watch you live it out and, and make it happen was really special. And uh, but the, the best part for me was the fact that there was so much emotion when this race, when you crossed that line in A2, there was so much emotion happening and it was so refreshing to see someone so excited and so pumped up to win a race you know like when, when like these days when the pros win you know it's kind of like uh, it's not like they're not excited but you know they've been through the motion before and yeah so it's 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 a little different you know um they're just adding another win to their you know long list of wins whereas for you you're building a a career and uh, this is one of the biggest races probably any young kid could win and uh, you went out and did it. So here we go. Uh, let's go right. take a stroll with Tom Rinderneck at the 2020 four wheel drive A1 race. Let's see. The third. Hey, man, number one. We're going race the drivers on the sound of the toll. So are you nervous? Side side yeah, I mean, at the start, I just want to get a good first few laps and try and stay clean. Oof. And when it, if anything happens, you know, you really want to make sure you take advantage of it. So, yeah, trying so to stay, I, trying to stay smart and not get into anybody first start here. 
really so got, had a good start. Um, was able to uh, move up to first, second lap. Yeah, Aiden gets a bad start. He messes it up on the triple, starts collecting some got some guys, and then um, Vanderbeek traction rolls in the sweeper on the end of his first lap, and then start of his second. And then uh, you inherit the lead here, really early. This couldn't go. This you couldn't write a script better than this setup right here in A one a full wheel open. Yeah, it was uh, it was really cool just to. Uh, be out there i was feeling really comfortable with my car and uh just to be battling with uh vanderbeek one of my good buddies from back home we club race together and he's been running some nitro with me and mason too Ooh. so that was that was kind of cool like just to be like okay like we are really battling at like one of the biggest races and we've club raced together since we were like super young yeah there seems to be like this really strong push in the midwest with the young driver man there's so much speed from you guys right now yeah, I think it's because, you know, we're all good friends off the track. You know, we're not trying to ruin each other and make each other mad. So I feel like we all have good respect for each other on the track. And we all race together really well. So that's it's just another fun, cool aspect of, you know, our kind of little group of racers we have. Oh, what a nice pass. Aaron Coffin awesome, goes in by a teammate of yours, also yep. a young driver in the uh in the northeast side of stuff in new york but uh still races you guys race quite a bit together and uh here we he, here he is he finally clears moves or he's making his way towards from ninth moving up to to challenge vanderbeek for second here and and right now you're kind of like just pacing yourself or what's the deal yeah i mean i'm just trying to uh keep myself clean and uh just try to give myself a little bit of space at this point I was, I was feeling a little nervous, honestly, so I wanted to give myself a little bit of space off the pipes, but I was still felt like I was going pretty quick, still at a pretty good speed. And also, I noticed that Aaron um, was catching very quickly, so... Yeah, so here I, we are. I definitely was trying to start to push at this point. I kind of knew that, you know, Kaufman had came all the way up from ninth, so if he gets around Vanderbeek here, he'll be making a charge. Here we go here. See how this lap looks. Landing a little wide, bouncing off some two. There's coming up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So I was just trying to tell myself, you know, you can do this, you know. It's just another race with the same people you always race with, you know. Just trying to keep my mental cool. So here we are. Checking oh, out, man, there, were, there was so many good battles. Like it was really hard to tell who was gonna stand out and win this race. Like I thought at moments, Aiden was. I thought you were. I thought you know, uh, Mason Kaufman. Like there were so uh, Vanderbeek. There were so many guys that were showing so much speed this weekend. Yeah, it was. Uh, obviously, I felt like I had to be pretty much perfect to beat any of these guys. You know, I have lots of respect for everybody that's that made the A. I mean, that's. Oh. A really big accomplishment so everybody out there is going to be really quick so i knew i had to be on my a game on main day to uh, have a chance to win six minutes, six to go. Across the line. Yeah, at this point i definitely was starting to feel the heat from uh, my teammate aaron here he was starting to catch me closing the gap visually every lap and i was like okay i just need to uh I tried to start pushing definitely now at this point. So now you're on the way. What yeah. percentage are you? Like 90%, 95%? Are you pushing 100 yet? Um, I think I was probably going like 95 here. But then he catches me, and I was trying to, like, he caught me, and I was kind of got out of my sorts a little bit, as you'll see here soon. And then I really realized, like, hey, I need to get going and really just put in the clean laps. So I was just making little bobbles. Just oh, like that. that right there, yeah. That could have ended very badly, but you got a lucky bounce. Sometimes you just have to have luck on your side. And here we go. You're under attack. So what's the mindset for you at this point in the race? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I know, you know with Kaufman behind me, you know, we've raced together a lot. We're teammates and good friends. So I know he's not going to do anything stupid to me. So honestly, I'm just trying to keep going forward and not focus about him being behind me 
now I'm definitely trying to push as hard as I can to give myself a gap again. Is it hard when you put in like a flawless lap and that person still just doesn't go away? Like you're like, I, that, that was a flawless lap. Like what else do I got to do? Yeah, I mean, you sometimes the other person's just as quick as you and you really need to just hold your line and push. Like I could definitely tell at this point, I'm starting to whip it a bit more on the gas there, getting a little loose. So I'm definitely like, all right, Tom, let's get going here. And this is a 10 minute uh, single A or double A main. And uh, we still have almost just under four minutes left to go. And you're here. We are. I mean, is this did you feel did you feel like this is going to be a battle till the wire, like the whole way through? Yeah, I mean, I was honestly <laughs> expecting Aaron, you know, to really stay right there. And it's all this track was just really hard to not make mistakes. So I knew if I stayed clean, I would probably be all right. And, and there's yeah, a little bit sketchy there. And then he gave me a little yeah. bit of room. That bobble that he had going on that dub, uh, the double, um, that definitely threw his timing off because that's why he messed up in the following corner. Um, he was kind of out of position, out of out of rhythm, out of speed, and uh, he turned in a little too early, and then got caught up. And that just gave you enough room to just like start really just set doing setting the controlling the race and setting your pace. Yeah, I feel like this point in the race is you know after from here on I felt. You know, my last probably from minute three right now to to the last minute was like my best driving. But then the last minute, I definitely was a little nervous for sure. But right here, I feel like these are some of my best laps I've strung together. That yeah, that when how how you rhythm that section, that double triple, like when you slap it perfectly, it the car has no in between time. It just bounces into the next set of jumps. Yeah, so, I mean, still at this point, though, I'm definitely not trying to let off at all. I'm still probably pushing 90, 95% because I need to keep, you know, I want to control the gap back to Aaron at this point. Like during qualifying, who, do you, who did you feel was like the, the person that was going to give you the hardest time that weekend for a win? I mean, yeah, he didn't TQ the first three rounds, so I definitely was like, like dang like this guy's throwing it down i need to pick up my pace a little bit and in q4 i was able to tq and i think that confidence going into the a mains helped a lot oh man interesting situation there wow okay i'm not sure what happened there but just a tough series for mason right there yeah and here we go, a minute 30 left. You've almost closed this up. Like, it's just there. Are you, is, is anything going through your mind? Like, sometimes when I'm racing and in these moments, I'm thinking to myself stupid things like, pinion gear, don't you even think about falling off right now. You know what I mean? Like, I or wheel nuts, please stay on. You know, like, I'm thinking dumb stuff. Like, it's, it's I just need to finish, you know? Stay together. Yeah, I mean, I was feeling really confident. You know, I worked through my cars before um, the mains, and I had Frank, you know, check over my stuff, make sure it was all working correctly. So, honestly, I was – I don't – I haven't really been thinking about anything like that. I'm very confident that my cars are going to finish every time I hit the track. So, I was just really trying to focus on just, again, giving myself a bit of space, especially with this little bit of time left. And I think I made a roll over here. I was getting through traffic, and I turned too tight under, and Aaron catches me a little bit at the end. So definitely was a stressful last <laughs> lap here. Yeah, he is charging 100% right now. Charging you... down there, giving me the hands. Calm down. You got this, dude. And then Short another. Of... Yeah. Just a sketchy yep. lap here. Just definitely nerves. Need to work on that. But this last lap here. And this is it, the final lap, man. And Scotty's calling your race. This could mean a huge win for your overall chances here. Oh, God. So, yeah, that was 
definitely a really cool the battle with air wow. into the line there you know and another thing about the race that was extra special to me was just having frank and ryan and todd there you know i put i know they put in, putting in a lot of time with the new four wheels so to be able to win the race was really even more special because of that i felt yeah emotionally how were you feeling were you just ex were you trying to contain your emotions getting off the driver's stand or yeah you... at, at this point i was just like chilling ready for my two-wheel race i was not trying to like you know people are giving me high fives and stuff but i wasn't really trying to like so you, you, didn't, you, you didn't want to go down with the pre-celebration like no <laughs> it's on, i definitely knew we still pre- had another 10 minutes to go and i have not even i had a good start but i have not won it yet so yeah no, that's honestly a great approach. You know, each race, it's 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 a diff, it's a new thing. It's a different race, yeah. so you kind of gotta like. Because I just knew that I was starting back at third again, so I really needed to, you know, have another good run. And it's not easy. I mean, like like we were saying, you know, there's lots of really talented people out there, in all the runs, and one mistake can be it, really. Yeah, and it matters so much. Like these days, I feel like at the beginning of a race matters so much uh, on the outcome. Um, you know, it, like if you make a mistake or get caught up at the beginning of, of the race, it is it is so much harder to make up that, that ground. But if you make that mistake at the end, for some reason, it's, it's you know. Um, people are like, more spread out. Yeah, people are spread out and you have the time to recover um, or you have the space to recover um, the time that you lost. But like at the beginning man you lose position and once you're behind um you know three or four guys that you probably you know you didn't think you were going to be behind that can changes that changes the complexity of your race so dramatically so like the chances of winning can go out the door just like that because you got shuffled back a few spots you know um like like we saw with mason um at the beginning of his race he kind of got uh, messed up at the, uh, at the start and got tangled up and then he got shuffled back to you know ninth or something like that and he could only come back so far you know because he had so many cars to pass he had he had to be careful around traffic so he wasn't able to let and then he had a battle for each position you know so but if you can qualify yourself into a spot where it can kind of keep it, it can give you a chance to stay with the pack and 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 lead out with the with the pack it seems like the chances of, of finishing well or podium is is so much better yeah for sure i mean you know it's it's really it's definitely really hard mentally too let alone like just actually getting up there mentally like just being like oh dude i'm already in last like for some people that's pretty hard to get over so um coming back from stuff like that is definitely not the easiest but it can be done i've seen it happen but definitely not a position you want to be in. Who do you think is the most like, like never give up kind of driver that you've ever raced against? I feel like, you know, I feel like a lot of us have like the same mentality of I'm never going to pull off the track. I'm always yeah. going to keep going. So I don't know if I can really pick out a specific person, but definitely, you know, I think all the pros have that kind of mentality. I think you have to have a mentality like that to, be able to drive well so i don't know exactly who has the best mentality at it but definitely you know a lot of guys in positions like you know like me aaron and mason definitely are all like not trying to just give up throw away just because we crashed one time you know, yeah we're definitely always pushing to keep moving forward and do the best we can i feel like that's like a, a new drivers some, some new drivers really really suffer with that like they make a mistake they get mentally frustrated and they kind of throw in the towel and throw away a run, you know, and um, instead of trying to salvage and, and keep fighting, because you never really know what's going to happen. Like, the, you know, you're the three fastest guys that, you know, should be faster than you. They could have a bad run, too. And then you could be ahead of them as long as you didn't give up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a few of like my best runs ever, like I think I've made like mistakes early, like in a qualifier and then was able to keep pushing and keep going and then it ended up being like really good because i didn't end up squitting out yeah <laughs> maybe that just got you more focused in and you're like you know what i can't be i can't make another mistake i gotta go yeah yeah so. yeah and other people are gonna crash too sometimes so i feel yeah. like there's always those rounds where like i kind of just have like a few mistakes 
And then I watch like the race after me and I'm like, oh, if I didn't make those mistakes, like, <laughs> I could have been just fine. Like, yeah, what was yeah. I doing? Like, <laughs> and sometimes I think for a lot of racers, that's that step in it is just is maturing, you know, just getting a little more experience, a little more mature. And then you realize that you can turn a bad run into a, a good run still. Maybe it won't be a, a great run, but it could still be a very good run that can score you and help you in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Every point matters in qual points. So especially now, like when it's two out of four, you know, you really have to have two good runs to make the A. Like yeah. I feel like the qual points are getting tighter and tighter every time we go to races. Yeah. It's like the open class this year was by far probably the tightest racing I've seen. Um, yeah. Just so yeah. many talented drivers. All right. So let's check out A2. This is where the magic happens. So what's the strategy now, Tom? Um, just trying to, again, clean start. Just as you were saying, that's really important to uh, keep yourself in the game. See right there, uh, Mason, he, he kind of jumped that the, that jump wide, and he knew if he turned back in, he would collect somebody else and, and get in a wreck. So like decisions like that, where you know, you know the other driver is going to go for your position and you made a mistake, you have to give it up sometimes. And then just keep in it, and then you can battle. I see a yeah. lot of guys try to deny the pass and just close it off and say, hey, man, you took me out. What are you doing? And so it's like, well, you were out of line, and you came back in line. You know, it's like yeah, exactly. you're also responsible as well. Ooh, so like right there, you didn't, you, you knew that you didn't really have them. You had position but didn't have the, the squirt to, to pass them there, and you backed out, making a smart decision. To keep yeah. your and then I shorted the triple there, so I put myself <laughs> into fourth place. And I was this was like I feel like the key moment where I needed to keep myself calm. Like, hey, like all oh, you you just need to pass one more person still. Like you're right in the race. Like no need to panic or anything. So I felt like my mentality at this point of the race, even though I wasn't in position to win at this point, was still really good. Because I know if I stay with Austin and um, Alex here, you know, if I can keep up with them and put some pressure on them, they could make a mistake. I think it was kind of like, forget what. Man, Austin, always a surprise speedster, huh? Like he'll just show up and be fast. Yeah, I mean, I think he practices a pretty good amount at home. Um, but, yeah, he's always super fast at the races. I feel like, you know, he's going to school and stuff, so he's not as committed as some of us can be. But he's are, uh, always really, really good. At so right there. here, are you are you trying – are you like, okay, are, are you trying to get by him or are you just trying to make sure that he knows – are yeah, you trying I, to pressure him to get so you can get by or what's oh whew. yeah i mean i'm just oh, that that was that, so close the fact that you throttled out of that was impressive yeah oh. and then he had a trouble on the straightaway again i think that was, so that was now i was in position and then vanderbeek also tracks rolled off screen so i'm in second place now so now i have my teammate behind me and Decent size gap to Aiden up front. So at this point, I was starting to feel a lot better about where I was at and kind of just trying to stay in position. But yeah, I think my, all of my fastest laps were in A2 here. And me and Mason just hauling around the track. <laughs> this is just like a practice day for you guys, huh? Yeah. This is, we did this yesterday. Probably going <laughs> to do it tomorrow. Yep. Running together. We know how we, we race. So we've, uh, I feel like we know what, like what the other driver does sometimes, like with little mint bobbles and things like that. So we're really, I think, you know, out of anyone, I know what Mason and Alex especially are going to do than anyone else. So. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was almost a less pressure situation. Obviously, Mason's really fast and everything, but I'm, I know he's not going to do anything stupid. Yeah. 
That's definitely always a good feeling to have, for sure. Any extra confidence is always a good thing in moments like this. Yeah, I mean, you got to have everything go your way. You got to be on top of your your game. You got your car has to be phenomenal. Like you have to have everything go right. Oh, and then Mason rolls it over, but obviously no issues for you. You're just going to be cruising out and trying to lock down a second place at this point. You're not really focused on having to win this race because it doesn't mean I mean just because you if you finish second you still win the overall. Yeah, I mean. I- this point i was definitely just trying to stay where i was at um but mason was definitely quicker than me because i believe he caught back up to me again after that mistake so after that i was really was like all right i need to get pushing i need to get going here i'm going a little thinking i was taking it just a little bit too easy at this point so i was like okay i need to get going now i think i started to close the gap to aiden towards the end and then well, you'll, you'll see how it plays out. I don't want to give it all away. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have some suspense in there. You can't just tell the story how it ends, even though we all know how it ends. Yeah. But, yeah, the yeah, Aiden's looking good out in front. He looks com- like it. He looks very comfortable and confident out there, you know, like choosing his lines, deciding where he wants to put his car. Everything's working well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he was definitely the guy to beat that weekend. So Aiden out front, you know, he's always, I feel like he's always riding off confidence too. We kind of have the same kind of mentality thing. If we're confident that day, I feel like we're going to do good. So he's definitely looking good out there. He, and he had tough A1. So he yeah. was uh, coming back from um, some tougher runs and he definitely was going to do everything he could here. And he really just kind of had to let it play out. I mean, there's nothing he could really yeah. do at this point. At this point, the only job that he has is try to fit, finish first in A2 and just see where you finish to see how the overall goes. And then here you are, Mason, back up on your bumper. And Alex now. So this is like a really – I feel like this was the most nervous I was for the rest of the race was like right here. Yeah, it's you like, know that you made a mistake now. It could mean the win – and the mm-hmm. overall yeah for sure so definitely um pushing hard pulling a wheelie through the center section hitting the little bump i think coming through it so that was kind of sketchy through there sometimes i was like oh boy like i was i thought i was gonna crash but what's the speed meter now at, at now like 90 percent? are you going 100 um i would say probably I don't know. I feel like I always drive within the 90 to 95% range, but yeah. if I like am behind and I need to get going, then I'm definitely going to push 100%. But I definitely think I was trying to gap here. I don't want to put myself, I don't want to keep myself in the pressurized situation. Yeah, you don't want them on your bumper so that if you make a bobble, they collect you. Yeah. So you can kind of give yourself a bit more space again. Just a little space so that it's just comfortable. Yeah, and Aiden just doing what he needs to do, doing a great job out in front. And then here you are in your situation, sitting second, but you have third and fourth right behind you. And if something happens, this could basically mean the the overall championship. Yeah, so this is kind of just more of a, I mean, I wouldn't say this is the whole point of the race, but I think if Anderbeek makes a mistake right there, that's where their Marshall's going to get. And then that was kind of more of a relief because I knew third or better would give me the overall. But definitely still, you know, a little, like this point I was going pretty quick. I see it's a 17.9 there. I had a few string of good laps. The gap is closing down to Aiden here, but I think I was just really putting in some good laps and he's trying to just conservate his lead. So he didn't need to push at all. And I was just trying to give myself more of a gap because more of less pressure is better for sure. And I, I was very confident in my car to push forward and not crash. Whew. And minute 20 seconds left here. And, and so when you start thinking about it sometimes. Yeah. And the minute left, <laughs> and are you wishing this race was over right now? Because sometimes I'm on the driver's stand if I'm in a position where I'm just thinking to myself, and I hear the time, and I'm like, dude, I wish this race was over right now. Like, what the heck? 
two minutes and 30 seconds left. I got to hold on to the lead like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think I definitely was uh, asking uh, Nick Black and Brent why we had 10 minute mains at this point <laughs> of the race. This yeah. is uh, kind of one of those moments where you're just like, okay, we just need to hang on one more minute. But yeah, yeah. nine minute mains would have been nice at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, something changed. Please let me just finish now. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, ten minute A mains. You really have to be on it for the both of the times, and you can't have oh, so one this bad is run. this is where you make your mistake, and something something remarkable happens here. Is Mason gives you the spot back so that you finish second and guarantee basically the overall. Had he had he not given you spot back and he finished third, would you still win the overall? Right. Yeah, I still would have won the overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, you know, he did. That was really, you know, I still really appreciated that. You know, he wanted to make sure that yeah, TOR was going to bring it home. And yeah, it was it was really cool he did that. But I mean, he didn't have to he at the end of the day. To. But yep, and here's the moment. Here, there it is. Cross the line. You cross the line. Here's the guy. He's about to jump on <laughs> on another car. <laughs> Getting all wild. So this is the emotion. I remember Aiden came up behind me because he finished like five seconds in front of me. And he like came up behind me before I was even across the line. And he was like grabbing me and then everybody was swarming me on the stand. And then dad's running up. <laughs> There's Frank. Yep, that was another, that, like I was saying before, that's what made it even extra special too. You know, it's just, there's Thomas there filming yeah. the whole moment. Hey, my old job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing yeah. what I'm used to seeing him do, but we're excited yeah. for 2020. 2020 already yeah. Now. yeah. And there's Charlie down there, I think. He's probably, oh, yeah. That was a good moment right there. Definitely yeah, what... won't forget that. What a moment, man. That. Yeah. And then it was time for two wheel already. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I still have to race another 10 minutes. Like, dude. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So you so you did the, the unthinkable. You 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 achieved the goal that you set out to do. You want it in spectacular fashion. And that moment, like I saw all that all that effort and all that that energy just be released on the driver's stand, man. It was so epic to watch. Like I don't get to see that very often. And I've been to so many races, you know, like that kind of emotion, that flow. It only happens so, like every once in a while, and it was so cool to see you do it and achieve what you've wanted to achieve, and uh, it was it was awesome to witness, man. So how did that feeling, that moment crossing the line? I know you had to go race two right after that, but like, like what did it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I was just, I mean, I just, you know, the redo race itself. You know, you, you watch the heritage video in between A one and A two. Yeah, and kind of watching that, you know, you kind of you know, you get reminded of how special the race really is with, you know, the history of Mike and everything. You know, I think that's super cool. Like no other race is going to feel that good just because, you know, the Reedy race was like started by like one of like the first ambassadors of the sport. Yeah. You know, obviously I never got to met Mike, meet Mike or anything, but you know, it was super awesome to uh, win the race and have, you know, some, you know, with my dad being there, you know, my he family was so wasn't, my family that. was not able to watch a one. They went to a um, baptism for my cousin, my little cousin, oh. and I was I wasn't able to go because it was during a one. So um, they weren't even there for the first main. So I was really happy. They barely made it back in time for a two. So I was wow. I didn't see them before the race. So I didn't even think they were even there. So I was really excited to see him come running up behind me. I didn't even think he was at the track. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome, man. I mean, just 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 to just to seeing a racer accomplish a, a huge goal like that, it, it to me it means a lot. Just because, um, you know, not only is it something meaningful, I think, um, for every racer, for you know anyone that reaches a, a huge dream of theirs, you know, it means a lot to to them that moment. You know, for me to be a part of it and to witness it and to, to see the progress that you've made. Um, you know, from your AE days to TLR days to to how you are now, you know, it's it's 
you've you've gone you've gone un, you've undergone a lot of change and it's nice to see this progress happen and yeah. to, to witness you get a big win and all that time that you put in it is, is, is starting to show for something you know yeah for sure I mean, you know having the good team backing like i said i feel like that was the most special thing about it just you know frank and all the guys putting so much work on the four wheel and to mm -hmm. go out there and drive it as good as i could and be able to bring it home was really special I yeah, felt like that—that that was like the it being the Reedy race and you know winning it with a car that you know wasn't even released yet and all of the people that were there working on the project like got to watch and I, yeah. it was super cool to you know talk to all those guys after the racing and it was it was definitely a great moment and uh, we knew that the uh, release of four wheels could be even more epic than it already was. Yeah, it, it, I mean at Worlds we saw the the glimpse of the speed of the four wheel. <laughs> Yeah, uh, your race. We saw you take it, and you know Aaron Kaufman was fast. Mason was fast. Definitely, the Fogels got some some speed, and it was yeah. good to see all that effort. You know, not just your effort into your racing program, but all the effort by TLR and guys behind the scenes, scenes. You know, working on the project, and like you said, they got to see and witness and be a part of your win. You know, like yeah. it was really cool. Yeah, so I what, mean, especially with where we were at before. You know what five months before that to that was like you know that was a really big thing like yeah i was definitely excited to run open again i mean some people are asking me if i was bummed if i wasn't really an invite and i was like mm, i mean a little bit but at the same time you know in open you know you're supposed to be the guy now since you've been an invite so it was a bit more pressure but i definitely had fun racing open again and cool. uh, it wasn't easy that's for sure so what's uh what's Tom's next goal here? What's your next goal, buddy? Um, I just want to get out there and race here soon. Um, we've just been uh, practicing with the eight scale stuff, trying to get my eight scale program more dialed in. I'm feeling really good on the ten scale side of things. I just need to uh really put the time in with nitro, just because I haven't had like anywhere to practice before. Mm -hmm. And now that I can, you know, put in time with that is just to make sure everything's staying together and I know how to tune my engines and everything for what I like. Cool. So that's awesome. the main goal is to get the nitro program going, but also I'll still be practicing with 10 scale here soon, whenever we can uh, go back to the track. Sweet, man. Um, so let's, uh, let's say, let's say some thank yous. Like who do you, who would you like to thank? Uh, yeah. Um, all my sponsors, TOR, Hobby Wing, J Concepts, uh, Boom RC, Ultimate Engines, Nitro Tain, Beach RC, and everybody else that supported me. Spectrum as well. You know, all the guys putting in lots of time behind the scenes, you know, to, for us to go out there and throw it down is just really cool. You know, you don't really see, you know, how much time everybody puts in behind the scenes as much. Yeah. Just being a part of the whole project of the four wheel is just definitely the best feeling for sure. Cool, man. Well, good luck in the future. I can't wait to uh, get to a track where yeah. we're in, in a big race and hang sure. out and do our thing again. It's been a long time, I feel like, man, that, that we've got to do that. And, uh, you know, I miss it. So uh, in the meanwhile, please stay safe. And uh, yep, we'll catch you, too. you, Tom. Thanks for doing this little breakdown. Uh, you know, like I say, keep on trucking, man. You're doing a great job. Um, I love the fact that uh, I, get, I, I get to be a part of your racing a little more closely now. So um, yeah, me too. I'm, really I'm looking excited. forward to it. So uh, all right, everybody, thanks for watching this episode of the Race Breakdown with Tom Brunick, checking out his 2020 Full Open win. See you guys.